Why everyone chooses to hate on the newer Nissan is beyond me. Because it goes without saying that Nissan never, ever misses when it comes down to making affordable sports cars that grace the grassroots racing community and street takeover community almost at the same time as long as dealers Stay over there. Okay, the cheap tuna cars can't be found pretty much anywhere anymore, but there is a platform that I would die on a hill to say will look objectively better than the Nissan 350Z. I'm Alex Martini, and today we're talking about the one, the only, the Z that should have ended here. Today we're talking about how to modify a Nissan 370Z. With Ray's work, Enki and K, Stage and Koenig on the site, along with Continental, General, we're getting Yokohama on there as well, and Falcon Tires, you can now get your wheels and tires mounted and balanced for free by us. Helping you find out what works best for your car because we want to help you mod your car right, right here at martiniworks.com. We check over every wheel and tire package and we want you to mod your car with your friends. So check us out and if you need some inspiration, you can head on over to our build threads. If you see something or you want something, we don't have it on the website, I promise you we can get it just shoot us a message over there the nissan 370z claims to be nearly entirely different than the 350z from a design perspective okay and functionally i don't really know how that works take it as you will but it is shorter stubbier and wider than its older brother which also means it's lighter i drove the 370z a couple years ago on a short course after the 350z and the only way that i could explain the difference between the two is that the 370z felt tighter it just felt better the front bits are all loose the new rear structural bits help the tush feel like a post-gym date with the girl or boy of your dreams. And the changes to the suspension bits to use forged components make the car feel less like a takeover car and a little bit more like an SCCA car. Sure, the interior bits feel a bit like what a frozen meal would love. A plasticky, a little bit out of place. But you really shouldn't give a shit because you're going to be changing it all anyway. That's the key thing here with the Nissan 370Z. If you get it for a good deal, you are going to love modifying this car. The 6 the speed manual is obviously preferred, but the standard 3.7 liter VQ37 with the 7,500 RPM redline, which gave you 337 horsepower, is damn near perfect. Now, no one should be arguing with you on what's better between the two, the 350Z or 370Z. The 370Z is better. The biggest difference is price. The 370Z has a bigger engine, more power, less weight, better power to weight ratio. It's shorter, wider, and even the automatic has two more gears. It's faster on the zero to 60, and it's got better braking. The one reason you would not buy this car, look at me in my blue eyes, is because it's more expensive than the 350Z. Now, who in the world would say that it's not good? I don't know. People that dumped their entire retirement fund into a 350Z. 370Zs out of the gate are going to have some issues, just like all good relationships, you know? If you communicate and proactively solve these problems without making it a you versus me battle, you will have a great time. But if you don't, and you just bury those emotions forever until it becomes part of your personality, you're not going to last very long. Now, 370Zs have a concentric slave cylinder issue, which which is notorious. Issues on steering lock are also common. There's oil consumption, it's standard practice because it's a Nissan, nothing's gonna ever change that. And people will report a rear axle click, all of which have a Bible of information online to get fixed. So make sure those valve covers are nice and dry and your bushings and control arms are looking good. And once you're there, then we can jump into all the good stuff. We can slide the weighted blanket over us and have a good night's rest. Welcome to the anti shit Z build zone. The Nissan 370Z has huge gains from exhaust and intake changes, which is why every double digit IQ owner straight pipes these to sound like the standard lobby in the Call of Duty open chat. A set of cold air intakes though, solid. From there, get some Z1 headers. I think those work great. And then jump back into an HKS titanium tip cap back exhaust, which will set you back around $1,700. Now, I know I'm telling you to spend a lot of money on the school bus of air that is your intake and exhaust system, but the sound department on this car can truly make or break anything you do with this platform, truly. the number one spot where this exhaust will screw you are those little test pipes. If you're building your own full length exhaust system, get something that tones down the exhaust, not makes it louder. Just by making the diameter of your exhaust bigger, you're already accomplishing that. It's the test pipes that will make the thing sound like a trombone. Only other optional item to boost up power is an upgraded upper intake manifold, but they can get pricey, again, being around $1,700. If you do that, along with the proper tune, you can easily climb up to right about the 400 horsepower range or so, which in my opinion is plenty for this platform. 
platform. You are gonna be able to do everything you could possibly want at this number. Now, our true expertise is the wheels, tires, and suspension bits of the game. So with wheels, you want to go staggered. Basic setups being an 18 or 19 inch diameter, nine and a half front, 10 and a half rear width, and then a plus 22 offset on either the front or rear, or you can go with a 10 and a half plus 15 offset. Now tire size would be either a 245 40 in the front and then a 275 40 in the rear for a nice stocky setup. You can play around with that a little bit, but that's what we'd recommend. Wheel choice here would be the stage nights in all white, the 18 nine and a half plus 22 and 10 and a half plus 15 look great. And the 18 inch keeps the tires affordable. Now looking for a stance build, we have the 3P air suspension kit that comes with everything you need. And then our wheel recommendations will go up to a little bit more of an aggressive setup. 19 by nine and a half plus seven and a 19 and 11 and a half plus 10, which is a three piece wheel or 19 by 10 and a half plus five and 19 by 11 plus zero on 225, 35 and 235, 35 tires will get you a nice bagged slammed setup. Now, you might be thinking that now's the time to supercharge your car. What I need you to do is I need you to pump your brakes. You need to get out there and you need to drive this thing. Okay, enjoy it and get the absolute most you can out of this car before you start throwing forced induction at it. I get it. Everybody wants 500 horsepower these days. You don't need it. In my humble opinion, these cars are wicked fun naturally aspirated. So how do you modify a Nissan 370Z easy, baby? You grab $15,000 and you buy a 2009 370Z that's inevitably gray and immediately hold yourself back from wrapping it some god ugly matte purple. From there, you're gonna fix the oil leaks, the clutch issues that leave the pedal pushed down for some reason and slap anyone directly on the cheeks for telling you to straight pipe it. Instead, we're gonna do it right. We're gonna open up the nostrils with some K&N intake, an HKS exhaust with some high flow test pipes that still keep the drone down as well as figure out if you wanna go with coilovers or air suspension, deciding on how you want to build your car. If the G59 is the way, then the 3P airlift suspension kit is primo, along with some huge work wheels on some skinny tires, but you'll completely remove 80% of the fun in owning a Nissan 370Z. If Ram Scene is on your Spotify playlist, then you're going to want to get a set of BC coilovers, Fortunato, or KW coilovers, and that's going to give you everything you need, along with a set of 18 by 9.5 plus 22 and 10.5 plus 15 stage nights and key and TO5s or Gramlay 57 CRs, all from your favorites at Martini Works, all with an all-in cost of less than $30,000, which is gonna get you a 350 horsepower car that'll get you either coast to coast with absolutely no issue or to the local autocross event where you're gonna absolutely destroy it. But most importantly, when you do look to mod your car, do it over with your friends at martiniworks.com. I'm Alex Martini, and if you already have one built, add it to our build thread so that you can help people that are looking to do this platform but they're not, they haven't made the mistakes you've made yet, help them not make as many mistakes. Add your car to the build threads. If you wanna see us talk about another car, let us know in the comments section below. If you're looking for car parts, check out the site. We're adding new things every day and we have access to everything you need. We're here to help you find the right parts, not just the cheap stuff, and we're happy you've made it this far. Let us know what we should talk about next. Love you. adios.